next weekend. So they got a tough road ahead of them, even if they manage to uh, to win this one. So we'll have to see. I can imagine there's going to be some highly contested picks after the last one, but it looks like the bands are pretty similar to what we've seen. Yep. So Zareth Draven keeping Arc Second away from that Zareth, keeping Hostmark away from his Draven. And then we're going to probably see the regular uh, Rengar Nar, or I, I bet you Nar is going to be after Syndra, so they don't let Westrise have that what destroy them that first game. Yeah. And then Aurelia from Chump John. There's the, that's the respect bands coming out from three major players. Which is really interesting because I've seen Complexity White first pick Aurelia a lot in some of their scrims and their ranked fives matches. They first pick top lane a lot, and Aurelia seems to be the one that they go with if Nar isn't available or if something else isn't on the table. So that's just really respecting Chump John's Aurelia. They don't even want to leave that on the table. I mean, who would have guessed? I mean, obviously you could check his like solo queue history and stuff yeah. like that. He plays a lot of Aurelia, but to bring it out on the main stage in a tournament where you're like, all right, this is do or die time. I'm going all in. And yeah. it worked out. It was yeah. phenomenal. It was just a front line that they needed. Yeah. And uh, the picks that are opened up, Westrice, uh, what are they going to go for? Could they snag the Oriana away from Arc Second? Because he finally came through with those shockwaves. Yeah. Oh. Oh, am I am I rubbing the crystal ball correctly here? Are we good? Uh, we'll see. But Oriana could be a pretty safe pick for Golden Clue. Well, we could, we just saw how comfortable Arc Second was on the Oriana. <laughs> Those shockwaves, especially compared to the last game where he was playing Jace. He was playing very tentatively. He was playing. It doesn't fit his style. Doesn't fit his style. The control mage though definitely fits in with his style, and uh, I that's really smart by Complexity to take that away if they decide to lock this in as first pick, and they do. All right, so. Gonna see what he can do with that, but Sojin gonna go right back to the cause. We didn't even highlight him. He was doing a great job of roaming around, keeping the buffs out. He counter ganked phenomenally as well. Yep. He became a big front line they needed, and there's Hanjaro's Janna. That is something I would have banned away, but there's just so many other things to take out. Like, there's no room for it to be banned. If you thought that Arc Second's Oriana was great, his Xerath is even better. Yes. And Draven is something that you never put in the hands of Hoofspark, no matter how comfortable you feel playing against a Draven. You just don't give it to him because he's one of the most experienced. You can put him down 0-10. He got, he's got like 150 stacks. Bam, yeah. just cashes in. Just cashes in and then completely carries the game. Pentakill with just one axe. <laughs> just, just Draven, the whirling yep. death. <laughs> but Jarvan going to come out from Kez here, so a little bit more uh, aggressive style possibly to come through with that flag and drag. Yep. And then Rumble up top for Westrice. So this is something that he's played quite a bit. He'll be looking to go more that tanky Rylai's route and uh, just try to be a huge nuisance up top. This is a combination that I was expecting to see a lot more of coming to the challenger scene. And look for this composition as we move forward in this tournament. So you cast three champions. Shockwave and then equalize. Exactly. And especially the J4 and the Rumble pick, just locking teams into the equalizer. This mid game composition from Complexity White is really potent. And uh, I, Monster Kittens is going to have to react to it. And this seems to be Monster Kittens. They seem to have a little bit of weak point in the mid game. They struggled a little bit in the first game and they got closed out on the mid game. In the yep. second game, they, they held themselves in in the mid game. That's yep. all they managed to do. They won in the late game. And uh, so this looks like Complexity White calling Audible and saying, hey, we need to go super aggressive in the mid lane, uh, make plays happen, and uh, really be the aggressors in this, this matchup because I, I'm sure Complexity White thinks they're the favorites. Indeed. So we're going to see the potential Corky again for Hostbark, which we are. So uh, he had a tough time first game with it. And if he goes up against Marby's Lucian again, Marbaby, excuse me, <laughs> is Lucian again. And then we're going to have Chump John with the Maokai up top. So looking to try to counter out the, <laughs> the tree burning Rumble mecha me Mechanizer. I don't know what you want to call him, but we'll see if he can stop the flames. And there's going to be a Nami Lucian. I love this combination. You put the Tide Caller's Blessing on top of the Gunslinger passive, or the, or the Lightslinger passive, excuse me. And. You just do a bunch of magic damage on top of it. Yeah. So the Nivea pick. Now, this is... That it, fits him perfectly. It fits him perfectly. Uh, the Ari maybe fit him a little bit better. I think Arc Second is like his, Ari is like his third most played uh, champion in solo queue. And even in rank fives, he's been playing uh, some Ari as well. Nivea does fit his play style, actually. We talked about that control mage. You can't push in. <laughs> yeah. Nivea is literally the epitome of control mid laners. And uh, looks like they're going to probably... Go with the Ari here. I think that makes that makes some sense. I like it. You get yeah. the charm. You've got the illusionary orb as well to go through everything and just uh, yeah. It does the true damage. I believe Ooh. coming back. Oh, Switching dead. it up at the last second. Oh, so he's gonna go for the opposite matchup that he had last game and try to test his skills against the Oriana of Golden. That's interesting. I uh, I'm not sure. Or maybe it could be mid Maokai. Yeah. Oh, How? oh, oh never mind. Don't, no. <laughs> don't talk with me. <laughs> We're getting ahead of ourselves here. But that's a really bold move by Arc Second to say, hey, I know I beat you with Oriana last game, but now this time I'm going to take your champion and I'm going to beat you with it again. Okay. So, I mean, 
The matchup is hard, too, because you can't commit, because she's got command protect. If she puts a little bit of an extra level into it or not, and then it's like, oh, the burst was just too much, and yeah. like, I can't do anything, now I commit to a dive and I'm dead. Yeah. But, uh, we'll see. We're going to be getting into the rest very soon, and we're going to also look for your guys' responses to what you think about the set. It's game three. Who do you think is going to win? Tweet at us at LOL Esports, hashtag LCX Expansion. We're going to look through those, and we want to hear your responses. As After that last game, Monster Kittens are showing that they have a fight in them. Yeah, I don't think anybody really expected. Monchkins is a really unknown team. A lot of these players, nobody's really even nope. ever heard of. They are at the top of the, the challenger ladder. I know Hanjaro has a popular YouTube channel that he uploads those clips on. He does a lot of support things. Yeah, but as far as being known compared to the guys on Complexity White, He's it's, down there. There's, it's not really a comparison. And, and being able to take a game off that, especially the second game, riding that momentum into the third game is going to be a pretty big deal. And they has Janna Corky this time. So Janna Corky. We're going to see the extra boost in damage the Phosphorus Bomb will get from the, uh, the shield coming in. And uh, it's, it's going to be interesting. He had a phenomenal game. The Howling Gales were on point. Monsoon was just great. And uh, we'll see if he can do it this time. And putting himself up against a Nami is going to be interesting as well because the ebb and flow is so annoying to deal with. You get harassed Definitely. out. And you can heal either your AD carry and yourself or you can uh, to do a little bit of extra damage as you bounce it from yourself to... Uh, oh, you bounce it from them to yourself. Yeah. So the big thing to watch here, though, is Hoofspark. I don't think this game he can really get away with sort of being <laughs> disposable like he was in the last I, I game. I hope not. <laughs> yeah. I want to see a little bit more worth out of him. Yeah, but... he has to make more of an effort to try and get himself ahead and, and keep himself in the game on Quirky because he doesn't have that, that buffer of being just a naturally strong late game AD carry. All right, so we're here with the final match or the final game between these players here in Complexity White versus Monster Kittens. And we'll see how it goes as they switch up the plays. And uh, it's going to be Kez on the Jarvan jungle and Sojin going back to the Kha'Zix. So I'll, I want to see Kez be a little bit more active this time. I mean, if he goes for a sight zone on Jarvan, that'd be rather interesting. Yeah, uh, I have seen him do it, and I wouldn't put it past him. It's not a, a jungle champion that you say, oh, well, that sight zone makes sense on him. But at the same time, that's just Kez's style. He loves to control vision early on. We've seen it in both games so far. Didn't even go for a spear dart and went machete straight, straight into Sightstone. Into Sightstone. Yep. So I, w I wouldn't be surprised if he did it, but at the same time, Jarvan, uh, not quite the best champion to be able to do that with. And first, first blood is joined by Kez, dropping the flag, putting that uh, Demacian diplomacy into the Kha'Zix. So no invades, nothing crazy. We did actually have uh, Marby Baby throwing out a ward, so they're going to be able to see if they go for a blue start here. But it doesn't look like Sojin's going to as he starts red, and he'll look to... Oh, actually, no, they're not going to mirror it out. So Kez will be starting his red as well, or maybe even looking for invade. But there's really a lot of good wards on the map right now from both sides. Yeah, definitely making use of those trinket wards early game. You can see everybody has placed theirs except for low pally, and uh, I can imagine he's just going to uh, go ahead and place that one late, either at that banana bush or, or on the red, just to make sure that there's not any late invades happening. Uh, to make sure that Kez's jungle is secure going into the, the first and second buffs. All right, so the buffs are going to be spawning in about 10 seconds, and we'll see the junglers go on their merry ways, and uh, it will be the mirrored blue-red from uh, both. So, Well, this lane up top now, Rumble is definitely not considered one of the stronger laners, but neither is Maokai. Maokai is not really a champion that you have too much kill potential in lane. There's there's chances that you, that you can, uh, bully someone out in lane and Rumble is probably the champion that you're going to be able to do it to if there is one uh, but I'm really excited to see how they're, they're going to deal with each other because a Rumble that gets ahead in lane and a Rumble that has a good early game is just going to be so potent going into mid game team fight. The thing though about Maokai is you can't spam Flame Spitter or he's just going to get the auto attack and heal and yeah, it's exactly. fine. <laughs> exactly and Rumble is one of those champions that spams abilities because his resources um, is not finite, so he, he's just able to use spell after spell after spell, which means Chump John is going to be heal after heal after heal. All right, so we're in the bot lane as well. We're seeing the effect of the ebb and flow. Maybe Baby just doing his thing again, showing that his Lucian versus Corky is pretty dominant, and they can't really do too much to it until the later later levels when the Phosphorus Bomb is finally clearing up the, the uh, wave, and uh, he's got the rockets to clear up as well. But it's... It's still a rough matchup, man. Lucian is just so dominant in the lanes. We saw him take down Vayne, take down Corky, and now looking to take out Corky again. He hasn't really lost his lane this whole set. Yeah. People make a big deal out of how strong of a lane the rest Lucian is. But I think that Lucian Nami is one of the hardest lanes to deal with because Nami is always going to be in your face. She gets those auto attacks on you, and that harass is just ridiculous. And if she lands a bubble, 
Oh man, that's just uh, game over for you down that bot lane. And of course, the one thing that Nami has that Thresh doesn't is the ability to sustain, which is a big deal in those types oh, of lanes. I love what Kes is doing. He's moving on up. He's going to hide in those brushes up top there. But Hoofspark taking a bunch of damage. Got to be a little careful. They do have the Gale. And Heal is actually being run in the spot lane this time. Hoofspark did pick it up instead of the double exhaust they were running last game. And this this is pretty dangerous for Chump John. He's got to be careful. Gets hit by those harpoons. And the Flame Spitter is going to force him out. But a bit too tanky as he kind of just shrugs it off. He has no problem with it. Yeah, Chump John, Maokai is not a champion that really fits his playstyle much. He's he's not the best team fight sort of top laner. He really loves that split push map pressure style. And uh, so I won't be surprised if West Rites gets a little bit of a better of him in this lane. Um, and uh, I mean, Chump John was mostly known for playing Jax in the, the Challenger series uh, oh. a few months ago. So no. completely different types of champions. Shadow gets thrown out. He goes forward with uh -oh. it. Dissonance comes through to give him the movement speed. He'll get slowed out by those Void Spikes. Shuriken connects and... Uh, not too much there. Golden Glue, he's probably been in that scenario about a hundred times. He's like, I just can walk out. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> look at this. Kez snuck his way all the way up top of Chump John. He's not biting the bait. He'll go back. Kez has spent a lot of time. He's talked a lot of XP, top too. Yeah, that's true. Um, so he's really just saying, hey, hey, Wes Rice, can I get some of this XP? <laughs> just, uh, just a little bit of XP, please, sir. Just some more. But he'll just keep pressuring this, and then if they die, this is really risky. They're going to go in. He heals up a little bit, and there's the Twisted Advance, and he might pick up West Rice. No, he gets out of range in time. He'll save his Flash, and he won't even try to TP out. So that'll be First Blood going over to Complexity White with some nice uh, juggling of that turret aggro. That's actually a really big deal. I think it's a bigger deal than what it may just appear being a First Blood because I mentioned that Rumble is, is such a momentum-based top laner, and... He has such a strong mid game, Whoa. especially with the equalizer. Maybe baby, baby going in, flashing an exhaust. Low Pelly ends up soaking that one up. Hoofspark is just going to go through. He's healing up with the potions on Jaro's, leading the charge. Low gives himself the shield. Auto attacks coming in. They force out the heal in response. Hoofspark is there, flashing forward. This is the fast response oh, with a no. good juke from maybe baby. But Low Pally, he's got the tie his blessing. He's got the auto attacks, and he can't get it. No, and that'll be once again these bot lanes are so evenly matched. Evenly matched in these skirmishes, but. Look at that CS difference. That's uh, more than double. Oh, that man. is that is going to be triple the CS of Hoofspark once this lane is done. So even though that trade seemed to be even, at the end of the day, that is not even anywhere close to even. And you can tell oh, true. that Impactful <laughs> and Low Pally really are not afraid to pile on the aggression because they know, hey, even if we give up a kill, being 30 CS ahead is going to give us a lot of breathing room. Yeah, I mean, I didn't even notice that, but he's been zoned out so hard. That's the power of Nami as well. Nami gets Jenna. Jenna can try to harass her, but then Evan Flow comes into effect, and then she's like, all right, I got time cause blessing. Now some extra magic damage and slow, and you're just like, I can't deal with this. Yeah. And you're forced back like we saw Hilf Spark. So good control there by Lil Pally. He's been around for a long time. That's the experience showing pretty brightly there. Yeah, and you can see the gold difference right now. This is seeming starting to look a lot more like game one where complexity was just winning out in the lanes there's a 1.3k gold lead and there was a kill but other than that it's He's only baiting. cs and only bot lane cs that's being the diff big difference in this gold right now good presence of mind by arc to not just can be completely baited by that in solo queue i'm pretty sure someone would be like i'm just gonna death mark him and go in yeah but Lil Pally, gonna get caught out by the Zephyr there. They do miss the Void Spike, so the slow is gonna be held off for just a bit. They flash forward, they get the isolation, and the slow damage should come through. What a double bubble! Gonna stop him, and Sojin misses the spikes again! But here comes Arc second, he's gonna drop the Ignite. There's a Shockwave to stop him for a little bit. The Death Mark is gonna pop, and Mavery Baby in the back does find a kill to Hanjaro. The TP came in from West Rice, and Hoofspark is dead. And that is gonna be a three for two in the favor of Complexity White. Yeah, and it looks like they are healthy enough to be able to do this dragon. They are picking it out. And this is where that first blood up in the top lane comes into play even more so because Chump John actually had to use his teleport to get back to top lane to make sure that he didn't fall too far behind. And he didn't have his teleport in that fight, whereas West Rice did. So not only is West Rice two kills ahead now, he's not that far behind on CS. He's contributed to his team's success, and they've picked up a dragon as well. So this is a great position for Complexity White to be in going into the mid game. Being ahead this much, with such a strong mid-game teamfight comp, is going to make it really easy for them to close out the game if they make good decisions. Indeed. So, we noticed that uh, Chump Johnny's taking a minor CS advantage, like he said, and then there's the two kills for West Rice, but he went straight Blasting Wand. So giving up on going Catalyst first, and just going straight for the nuke damage that he can use. And they're switching lanes. I think Golden Glue might stay up there first. Yeah, this is something that 
I, I mentioned a little in the first game, but when Golden Glue feels like he's against the wall, when Golden Glue feels like he's in not the best matchup for him, he'll just leave. He'll go to the top lane, he'll split push to his heart's content. One of the only players in all of the professional scene to be a split pusher on Orianna. And it's not something that, oh, he does once in a while. Almost every game he plays Orianna, he finds some time in the game to split push. <laughs> Farm in the jungle, split pushing out of your lane. He's yep. just everywhere. So We saw the spirit of the Spectral Wraith being built er earlier today, which but, is uh, not this the, game. the ultimate jungle taxing item for a, for a mid laner, especially on Orianna. It works out pretty well. I gotta say, I wouldn't be surprised if he built it either way, but going for the Athenes kind of means that he... And yeah. Sojin, he's hit that level 6 point, he's gonna evolve the wings and look to get some extra leaps in. And uh, we'll see if he can put it to effect now. He's got that 6, he can stealth on in, get the isolation damage. He's also actually a little bit behind Kaz at this point, who's finished up a Spirit of the Elder Lizard with the help of the kill and the uh, 3 assist thing. So. Yeah. So, we'll see. Monster Kittens really has to make some big moves here, but they also have to be really careful because of how strong the mid game is for Complacency White. We say it, but that combination of champions that they have going on right now is almost the ideal, like, second dragon fight composition. Level 11, these guys will destroy you in a straight up 5v5. Yeah. So you have to really be careful, but at the same time, they can't just bleed out. They can't just sit here and let their bot lane get further behind and, and just let their lanes uh, just sort of suffer and fall further behind. They've got a 3k deficit, and we're just 10 minutes into this game. Oh, this is time the gank is going to get spotted out. They can try to counter it now. Oh, this is not going to be too good. Jumping on in, though. Maybe Baby is going to be able to dodge away. No problem. There's the Cataclysm on top of it with the Tidal Wave. It's going to knock up three as the Culling comes through. Not doing too much damage. They're trying to focus on Zojin. They refresh the double boss on Kaz. He flashes forward, forcing out both of those flashes, and now looking for Hanjaro with a good Howling Gale. He's able to get out of there, but Sojin losing that double buff. Giving over to Kez, refreshing it, and now this tier two is gone. Oh, flash, flash bubble comes in. Hanjaro's gonna end up getting knocked up, but they do end up losing the spark. And now with the dot of the red buff, that's a double kill for Kez, and no problem for them as they now secure a tier one and three huge kills with the help of that back ward there. Yeah, so that was just a great bait right off the bat by Packle, by Mabry Baby down in the bot lane. They knew exactly what was happening there. They knew that that gank was coming. He wasn't afraid because they're so far behind that their damage is really tiny right now. And that sort of just seems like what Hoofspark's been suffering from in uh, all three of these games, actually, is just getting so far behind uh, in the laning phase. But it really seems like Monster Kittens has has lost that edge. They've they've lost that confidence now. They're playing super conservatively. Sojin's trying to make things happen. But it just feels like it's it's too little to be able to come back right now. Yeah, they're, they're down that, uh, that 4.7k gold, so. They're trying yeah. to do what they can to recover. Kaz has mobility boots too and a ruby crystal, so I wouldn't be surprised if he got the sight stone soon. They're looking for a dive up top, but this is going to be countered again. Sojin, this is a nightmare for him. They're going to leap on into West Rice here, do as much damage as they can. They do get the knock up in from the flag and drag, but Kez, so strong. Elder Lizard doing so much work, burning down that tree, and there's the dragon strike for the kill. Meanwhile, in mid, Golden Glue going to get initiated on here. Arc second, not even having to use the death mark as he was on cooldown, so able to take him down to the flat up 1v1, even with Lil Pally trying to, trying to zoom his way in there with the ebb and flow. Now, <laughs> Sojin going to fly his way out of there. Yeah, I don't know what was going on there with Golden Glue. He sort of willingly put himself into turret range, and Arc Second didn't even have to use the Death Mark in that situation. It was actually on cooldown. So just the Ignite and some auto attacks uh, onto Golden Glue were enough to kill him. So uh, it seems like Golden Glue is being a little bit impatient. He's being a little bit frustrated. Maybe that last lane. game kind of, you know, threw him off a bit. Threw him off a little bit because he had such a great start, but then just couldn't make things happen with the double exhaust. This game go. This game though, only one exhaust, and he's playing Oriana, so it doesn't really affect him too much. <laughs> no, it doesn't. So, 103 CS to 47 from Hoofspark. Wow. Maybe baby, <sighs> there's nothing he can do to this. To, uh, this Hoofspark is nothing he can do to him. Gets the shield, but just instantly, there's the piercing light, just it's gone. He loses any kind of uh, ability to stay alive in that lane. But Bubble comes through it. Stops Whoa. Sojin mid jump. Double TPs are coming out. This is going to be a four versus four. Tidal Wave going to knock up two. Hanjaro is going to be the force of that Cataclysm. As now he's stuck in there. He can't get out. They knew he had no flash. Low Pally able to secure that kill on the Nami. As now, coming in from Golden Glue. He was trying to make it a five versus four. But they're content with the one for none and looking to make it one turret as well as they keep pushing. But Arc Second fulfilling that Zed role and just keeping his presence known in mid. Yeah, making sure that he keeps split pushing. That's going to be. Oh, Whoa, the death, death mark. mark comes in. There's a flash. Oh, he uses the shadow and the flash to get out of that uh, shockwave. 
And he's able to stay alive. Meanwhile, Sojin down bot falls to the equalizer and Mabry Babies auto attacks. Yeah, that was really great patience by Westrice. As soon as he teleported in that bot lane, he held onto his equalizer because he realized that it wasn't going to be have a high impact on that fight. Held onto it. Maybe he'd wait for the dragon fight and maybe to get a couple straggle kills. And that's exactly what he did. Picked up Sojin on the backside of that fight. And Complexity White is just stomping all over this map right now, doing pretty much whatever like they game want. One. This is exactly like game one. And I actually think this is even worse than game one because Complexity is actually getting kills as well. It's not a perfect game, but they even have more of a lead at 14 minutes than they did in that game one. And Kez is 5-0, so absolutely wow. crazy. Wow, yeah. On, on Jarvin, so uh, that's not something that Kid usually does, so he's going to be able to get tanky as well as being that vision control sort of uh, supporter-style jungler. And, of course, we've talked about it a thousand times already this game. They're going to be able to close this game out just because of how potent that combination is for those mid-game team fights. And even Lucian is, he's not the best sieging AD carry, but getting those pot shots on the turret is a lot easier uh, with that double shot. Yep, so now up top, Chump John, he's been left alone for quite a while. He's found quite a decent amount of farm and his Rod of Ages. Westrice, I'm surprised he's not going commit. Oh, yes, he is. He's got Kez coming. So Chump John decides, I'm just going to go all in and try to fight you out. As he keeps throwing the sapling, he's doing quite a bit of damage, but those harpoons, flag and drag comes in, doesn't knock him up. He's trying to do what he can to stay alive. Gonna pop this ultimate, but Westrice is just so tanky. Scrap shield, overheating, and just doing complete work to that uh, Maokai there with the help of Kez. Complexity is not giving monster kittens an inch. Blue side advantage. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Sojin gonna get initiated on a cat kills him as well. He's able to stealth up and just jump away. So staying alive just barely. That little lizard was not enough to kill him. Yeah, Kez did have the flash available, but holding on to that one. Oh, really wait a minute. Whoa, oh. Wait a minute, Kez. Does the flag? All right, forcing him to back on him. Oh, flash and dragon strike for the kill. He's dominating six, zero, and five. A very smooth moves there by Kez. Knew exactly what he was doing uh, with that little maneuver. And Complexity White just continues to get further and further ahead. This is almost a 10,000 goal lead. At 15 minutes? At 15 Jeez. minutes. They actually, if they really wanted to, could have the potential to close this one out in a sub 20 minute game. Ooh. Kez is getting a little greedy here, but there's a tidal wave to come in. The shadow mark was not used then. They're just going to sacrifice Hanjaro, so they'll end up falling, unfortunately, but keeping our second alive is a much bigger, bigger, bigger objective. Yeah, when, when Kez, the jungler, is able to solo out your your Zed, who's supposed to be able to solo most people at level 11 in this game right now. You know your team's in a, in a really terrible position in this game. Impactful has such aggressive positioning. He's not afraid of anything because Hoofspark hasn't even completed the third piece of his Trinity Force yet. He's so far behind. Again, it's just not it's nothing, yeah. but Deathmark comes in from Golden Glue. He's going to chase, I mean, <laughs> from Arc Second. He's going to chase him out and just go right back on out to that Deathmark Spotted Shadow. Going on in here, Hanjaro takes a bunch of damage from Mabry Baby. Jeez, the red buff is doing so much work for him. Yeah, you can really tell that this bot lane of Monster Kittens just seems a little bit outmatched. Hanjaro is doing what he can to make it work in team fights. In last game, I think he was uh, one of the shining stars in Monster Kittens' victory, but Hoofspark has just fell so far behind in all three games. And it just makes you question. He focuses so much on Draven and Solo Q and in their rank fives matches uh, that maybe he, oh. he should have used it as a bait or something. Sojin gonna come in from back here, but there's Kaz just on his tail all the time. Pink Ward even committed. There's a nice monsoon, but Cataclysm right afterwards is gonna lock up Hoofspark on Jaro Falls. It looks like soon to follow up is gonna be Hoofspark Ignite comes in and Lil Pally will find that kill as he's actually running Ignite on the support. I thought he was taking exhaust, I didn't even realize that. But Aggressive playstyle comes in and works out pretty well. Yeah, and West Rice is just bullying around Chump John up here in the top lane as well. He does have his teleport available, but it's not very often. Inhibitor at see. 17 and a half minutes? Why yeah, not? Yeah, that is just so hard to come back from when you're that far behind. You can't even leave your base, really. When a team is this far ahead, they've taken your inhibitor. They have control over your jungle areas. And uh, even matches that you're supposed to be doing at least well in, at least okay in, you're losing. It's just, uh, Monster Kittens just has their back against the wall at this point. I have no idea what they're going to have to do to come back in this match. It kind of just feels like a, a solo queue game mid lanes, 2-0. He's like, come on, guys, why are you feeding? What are yeah. you doing? Yeah. I can carry this game. Gosh. But, uh... Four times report, AD carry. <laughs> report, Hoofspark, please. No. But, 
like you said, I have no idea how they can come back. 13,000 gold behind, having got a dragon, haven't... They've got one turret up top, which Trumpchon was able to get with some yep. alone time, but he's still so far behind. He's 0 and 3, he's trying to get towards the Spear Massage, I'm assuming, with that. That gets wrong cloak, but... Ugh. Yep. It's not looking too good. Yep. And, uh... I, I'm trying to think what monster kittens can do to come back at this match. We talked about in the first game when you're that far behind in a game, in a best of three, you kind of just gotta chalk it up and say, hey, what can we do better in the next game? But there is no next game for monster kittens. If they lose this one, they are out of the expansion tournament and have no chance to compete uh, to compete in the the 2015 Spring LCS. And Complexity White would move on, so they really need to try and make something happen. A last ditch effort, a desperate play. Yep. There's nothing to lose at this point. And don't forget, there's more League of Legends action after this game, too. Yeah, yeah definitely. One more best of three for today. And up, oh, they're diving into Hanjaro here. Kez is just asserting his advantage. He doesn't even take any damage. Look at him go. Bubble comes in, they hit Chump John, and they're just going to make their way straight for this inhibitor. I don't know what Muscle Kittens can do right now. They're clearing out the waves effectively, but that's not stopping the champions from just beating in on this inhibitor. And a sub 20 minute inhibitor is a really, really good place to be in if you're Complexity yeah. White right now. Yeah, that's just so rough. 13,000 gold in the lead at 20 minutes into the game. And this is even bigger of a lead than we saw in the first game. This is uh, just so rough for them. And you said it at that inhibitor turret. What are they supposed to do? Maokai can run in, but he's almost going to die instantly. And going in almost seems like a death sentence because if they get shockwaved and, and equalizer, then they're just going to lose the game anyway. So that ball positioning too. So aggressive. Look at them. They're, they don't even They're want like, to get anywhere near that ball. Uh, just keep it away from me. Yep. They even have a pink ward up there by the wolf pit too, so they're able to stop any wards. Tidal wave comes out. Gonna hit one. No more though. Shockwave is what an not equalizer. used yet. Equalizer is gonna zone them as well as push them back into their base. Flashing forward. West right's on a rampage. Looking for more. Burn it down the tree. Maybe baby. Gonna find himself one kill and he's four and zero and a lot of the people here for Complexity White have zero deaths. So on those sprees and just keeping that pressure mounted. They basically just used the Nami ultimate as sort of a deterrent. Say, hey, this is a warning shot. You guys better get away from the turret or we're going to kill you. Yeah. And uh, the ones that didn't manage to make it back to their inhibitor turret in time ended up dying. And that was a great equalizer by West Rice blocking him out right in the middle of their inhibitor turret and, and their escape path. So uh, this is just complexity wise, just seemingly bullying out monster kittens from the entire game. Indeed, I mean, oh, they could just keep going down mid. They can even force a Baron here. I mean, with Shockwave, Cataclysm, Equalizer, even Tidal Wave, you can't fight into that. Yeah. There's there's nothing you can do. Yeah, it, it's not even going to be hard for them to, to break that shell. They've already gotten that shell broken in the bottom lane with the inhibitor turret as well as the inhibitor. They've just proven that they can even engage past turrets and still come out incredibly victorious in these team fights. Jeez. Suffocating Kez, them completely. Yeah, it's Kez has absolutely no fear of being caught out right now. He's just roaming around the map, placing down wards. They could all be in that bush and he just wouldn't care. He could just fly <laughs> and drag out and he wouldn't even be in danger. Probably just cataclysm in anyway and just have the ball on him like that. Yeah. He's waiting for somebody to face check. He wants it. He's gonna go for it. He's got the ball on him. Oh, dissonance comes through. Flag and drag in. Cataclysm on top of Hanjaro. The ball is still there, but they don't want to commit shockwave. So they'll take his flash instead. Yeah, that was a, a great move there by Complexity White. They're just playing this one so crisp, making sure while West Rice is pushing that wave up top that they're getting vision control across the map and applying pressure so that Monster Kittens does not even want to step outside their base to try and clear these waves. And oh, here we go. In. As Chumpton did a bunch of damage, but a four-man shock wave comes on in, and that's going to be two dead. Looking for more as Arc Second follows suit, and oh, that's three going down. Looking for more flashing forward. Maybe Baby with the Pierce of Light. Gonna be unstoppable. Can he find the kill to Sojin? West West wants it. He's got the harpoon. One and two, and that's the ace. They're all dead, and it looks like that's just the game done. Yeah, yeah. complexity white. I mean, these death timers actually aren't that long because it's they still could come back up. I it's mean, still uh, super early in this game. Hanjaro's actually up in three seconds, so they might not be able to, to end the game yet. But even if they don't, this game is is uh, pretty much in the bag for complexity white. They could literally do whatever they want for the next ten minutes and still have a good chance of winning. True. They could just go Baron, just be clear out the jungle, do what they want. Sit in base. They even just lost a uh, Nexus turret there, so these yeah. super creeps, too strong. At this point, when you have two inhibitors down so early in the game, those 
those super minions become really hard to take down, especially when they come in pairs because they buff each other. And if you don't have a lot of that, like, armor penetration or magic penetration or even just yep. levels in, or in general, you, it's a team effort to be able to take down those waves of super minions. And that just allows complexity to get even more over, even more control over a map that they already pretty much own. Yeah, it's just real estate for them at this point. They're just going to go rent out Baron for a little bit and yep. uh, get that buff. And it just falls very quickly. I mean, already up, maybe baby, he's got an item and a half. Maybe even two items if you count the F-Sword, I guess. Well, one whole item. Hoofspark has finished that Trinity Force, so <laughs> finally, here comes the power spike oh, from Corky. And there goes Hanjaro. Yeah. Bubble comes through. Oh, connects in the Equalizer as well. That's going to be a bunch of damage on top of it. Calling to follow to force out the Flash. Tidal Wave comes in. He's just going to teleporting. TP out. And oh, they get him beforehand. And maybe baby. Going godlike. Sojin going to be able to get out in that bush. And this should be game. <laughs> Yeah, there looks like they're just going to push straight up on this inhibitor that they already have here. There's not much that's going to be able to stand in their way. They do have the Baron buffs. They're going to have Super Minutes coming up. Look at this positioning. They are just hugging the fountain right now. Second Nexus turret's going to fall. It looks like that one's going to be game. All right, so there's the Nexus taking some damage. And once they decide to commit to it, the game will be over. But they're kind of messing around a bit. There's the Shockwave flash in from Golden Glue. Double kill comes in from West Rice. And uh, huh, Arc second. Got himself a kill there on maybe maybe that's a lot of gold for him, but the game is done. He won't even get to use it. And uh, that's that's it. Looks like monster kittens are out. Yeah. Flexi to white. I'm moving forward to play against.